In this last video, I'll be changing tack a little bit, moving away from appointments to exits and the conditions of holding office. We're going to start with some very broad but very useful information just on tenure. So if we think just for those apex courts, the courts at the top of the system, what's the tenure of judges as found in the constitution? Well, um, in some constitutions, this is not actually addressed. Um, it's left to ordinary legislation. There are uh, some countries where there's a life term and that life term is unqualified. So the US uh, would be an example of that. A roughly equal number have life terms, but with mandatory retirement at a specified age. And then you move on to the, the countries where there is a specified term. And in those constitutions, the median term is nine years. So you can think of judges on average as serving uh, for nine years. If we think about the mandatory retirement set, you know, maybe if, let's say, if judges are uh, getting onto your Supreme Court, uh, uh, 60 and have to retire at 70, that gives a, a similar term in practice. If you think about their conditions whilst on the court, I'll go back to that uh, CEPAGE data. If you think about all full-time judges, so not just the ones on the apex court, you know, on average those judges get two and a half times the median national salary. Um, so if we th let's take a, a national salary of around £25,000 per year, uh, two and a half times that would be you know, £63,000. If we move on to the apex court judges, the ones at the top, then we're looking at something which is five times the average median national salary. So again, if you've got a median national salary of around 25,000, uh, then you're looking at salaries in the 125 to 130,000 range. I've given those averages in terms of pounds, but I have to note that the UK is, is way above this. Um, so our high court salaries are four times the national average and our Supreme Court salaries eight times. So we, we really do pay our judges well uh, in comparison, at least to the national average salary. And you can see that uh, on this plot where I've got on the horizontal axis the number of judges per 100,000 population and the first instance salary expressed as a multiple of the average salary. So if you've got very few judges, you tend to pay them more um, if you think about the last part of this exit, well, if you think about those judges who have life tenure, who don't face a fixed retirement age, they can step down whenever they want. Uh, and maybe, you know, they would step down when it would be politically advantageous to do so. Um, one of the ways we see this sometimes is when judges stay on too long. Uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who died a couple of years ago, she was often pressured to retire during Barack Obama's presidency because it was thought that Obama, a Democrat, would be able to appoint someone who was closer to Ginsburg, ideologically, than Obama's successor, proven correctly. Uh, that's probably true in the US, um, but if we look more broadly, there's very, very little evidence of this kind of strategic retirement. Uh, no evidence of it in Canada or the UK or in Latin America. In fact, if anything, some people suggest that uh, judges are more likely to step down when the opposite party is in power. So that finishes that uh, last lecture on the tenure and exit of judges. Um, I think overall, the key points I want you to bear in mind is that appointment mechanisms differ for judges in general and apex court judges. Um, 
when you're thinking about judges in general, you want to bear in mind this distinction between career and recognition judges. And when it comes specifically to the apex court, you know, there are these different approaches. So you would want to know if you're studying a particular country, how many actors are involved in appointment and how sheltered are they from political considerations. Uh, I've got a short bibliography there for this last section in case you want to follow any of those items up.